All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be working now on the second video. Uh, on the first video, what we did is we estimated the regression coefficients in Excel for the following specification. We had y as our dependent variable and x1, x2, x3 as our independent variables. And we added a constant. Here is the data. And on the previous video, we managed to get so far as getting the coefficients, which we see down here, 528, 0 0.74, are the coefficients for x1, x2, x3, which are highlighted over here. What we want to do in this second video is we want to go to through the standard errors and we want to conduct the hypothesis testing for each one of the variables. Um, in order for us to go through the standard errors, we're going to need to, uh, in order for us to estimate the standard errors, we need to estimate this expression that says that the standard error for beta 1, for example, is the square root of element 1, 1. Since this is beta 1, this is going to be element 1, 1 from the x transpose x to the minus 1 matrix. So element 1, 1 is going to be on the main diagonal. So let us write over here the elements from the diagonal. So for the first coefficient, I'm going to need to take the value 0 0.4. Similarly, for the second coefficient, I will need the value in cell 2, 2, second column, second row. And for the third coefficient, I will need 0 0.01. And finally, for the fourth coefficient, 0 0.015. So I have the first part of this expression. Next, I need to get the sum of y minus y hat. And for that, I have added the data over here so I can get y hat. My y hat for the first observation is going to be equal to 5.28 plus 0 0.746 times x1. And x1 is going to be 0 0.6. So let us go ahead and add that information. So 5.28 plus 0 0.746 times x1 plus the next coefficient is 1.10 plus 1.10 times x2 plus minus 1.34 times x3. Now, since I want to copy paste this all the way down, I'm going to need to lock the cells that are giving me the coefficients. So I'm going to go to C36 and I'm going to press F4, C37, C38, and C39. And now I'm ready to copy paste this information all the way down. So there is my Y hat. However, as you can see over here, I need to estimate y minus y hat and y minus y hat are my residuals. So my residuals E is equal to y minus y hat. So let us go ahead in the next cell and estimate. So this is equal to the actual value 10 minus y hat. And I can simply copy paste this all the way down. There it is. And next I need to square this term as you can see before I can sum it. So now I need to estimate 7.6 times 7.6. I can just copy paste this all the way down. All right, so I am ready now. I need to sum it. So this is equal to the sum of the residuals squared. 337 is the term in the numerator in this expression. So I can go ahead and simply ask for 337, and I'm going to have to divide that by n minus k. Since I have 10 observations, my n is 10. Minus k. k is the number of parameters that we're estimating. So we estimated 1, 2, 3, 4 parameters. So 10 minus 4 that's going to be equal to 56. So copy pasting this all the way down. I am ready now. I'm sorry, I forgot to lock T36. 
256 I need to lock this value so I can copy paste this and now I am ready to estimate the expression that we see over here so for the first beta I have the square root of element 1 1 0 0.4 in the x transpose x to the minus 1 matrix times s squared so there is my standard error for all four coefficients, right? So I have estimated my standard error. <clears throat> I'm ready now to conduct my hypothesis testing. And in order for me to conduct my hypothesis testing, I will need to go to my formula and find out what my T value is. My T is beta I minus beta null divided by the standard error but my h null is that each beta i is equal to zero versus my alternative hypothesis that my beta i not equal to zero this is a two-sided test so i can go ahead and create a distribution so we can visualize this so there is a t distribution where I have my zero value in the middle and my H1 area is going to be the area on the right hand side and the area on the left hand side. So this is my H1 area and since I'm conducting the test at let's say alpha is equal to 0 0.05 that means that each one of those two sides is going to be 0 0.025 so this is 0 0.025 and the area to the right is another 0 0.025 which means that I have 0 0.95 of the total area 95 percent of the total area in the H null region all right in order for us to conduct the test we will need our critical values and we can find the critical values in either of two ways we can go to a we can go to a t-table so I can I have a t-table that I have ready here my t-table is here I know that I have in each one of the tails 0.025 or 2.5 percent of the total area so I know that my critical value is going to be somewhere in column F and I have n minus k degrees of freedom which means that I have <coughs> 10 minus 4 so my critical value is 2.447 and I can go ahead and and I can go ahead and just add this value to my diagram so there it is 2.447 to 2.447 now next thing I need is to get the T values for my test and as we said my T values beta I minus beta null but since the beta null is zero I'm testing it against the hypothesis that my each one of my beta I's is equal to zero this simply is my beta minus zero divided by the standard error that I just estimated which is 1.10 for the first case I can just copy paste this all the way down 2.01 141 and minus 1.44 so let us see whether in each one of the cases we accept or we reject the null hypothesis for the first coefficient where I found a t-value of 1.1 I know that 1.1 falls somewhere between 0 and 2.4 so as we can see the first coefficient is not statistically significant the second one is 2.09 that means that it falls very close to so 2.09 falls somewhere over there it's very close to rejecting to the rejection region however it's not close enough so again it is not statistically significant 1.41 for the third coefficient and finally minus 1.44 for the fourth coefficient so none of our coefficients are statistically significant and this was expected since uh, the data was mock data um, 
which we created in order to demonstrate how we can run a regression in Excel. Um, one more thing before we move to the next part is that we could have estimated the critical values directly in Excel. In other words, we didn't have to resort to a t-table. So I can go ahead and ask Excel to produce those values for me. So the t-critical, the formula for the t-critical is equal to t.inv.2t, since I'm doing a two-sided test. And then it's asking me for the probability. I'm going to conduct my test at the 5% level and my degrees of freedom are equal to six. And as you can see, I get exactly the same critical value as we got earlier from the table. I can also get the p-value <coughs> um, and I will do that by simply asking for t.dist of j46 so in other words of my t value that I have estimated where my degrees of freedom are going to be equal to 6 and for cumulative I'm just going to write true uh, false I'm sorry and for cumulative I'm just going to write false so my p value is 0 0.19 for the first for the coefficient for the constant as you can see for the second coefficient we have estimated 0 0.746 the value is very close to 0 0.05 and we could have guessed that but since the value 2.09 is very close to the critical value 2.4447 however it is not close enough so all coefficients are statistically insignificant in this example all right, so this concludes the second video where we have estimated the standard errors in the t-statistics. We still have to go to the next part where we will be estimating the total sum of squares, the residual sum of squares, and the estimated sum of squares so that we can complete the ANOVA table, the R-square, and the F-statistic for analysis before we move on to replicating our results using the econometric software Stata and SAS.